Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Markets Hunters. I am your host, Hunter Gaylor. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We've got a lot of exciting news that we're going to be covering. Um, uh, we're actually going to be joined by John Dolan, who's the General Counsel and Chief Business Development Officer of Pet Vivo and Pet Vivo Holdings. Their stock symbol on the NASDAQ is PETV. So we look forward to having them uh, in studio with us today. And we're going to be going over some of the really breaking news that they have. So uh, stay tuned and thank you for joining us on the Markets Hunter. Before we go into the program, I'd just like to remind our viewing audience, uh, make sure you follow us across all platforms. We are on Instagram. We are on Twitter, uh, newly on TikTok. Uh, we are also on LinkedIn. We're streaming across uh, all platforms when this, when this, uh, when this airs. And uh, really just a special thanks out to all of our loyal audience and supporters, a lot of the shareholders that follow these companies. Uh, you are the backbone of the Market Center platform, and you are really the reason these companies speak with us because of the great information we're able to bring you in real time. So without further ado, welcome to the Market Center program. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Markets Hunter program. I am your host, Hunter Gaylor, and I am going to bring into the studio John Dolan. John, thank you so much for being on the program with you or uh, with me today. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you in studio. I think it's actually the first time you and I are speaking. It is. Thank you, Hunter. Thank you for having me. No, no, no. It's it's an absolute pleasure. And John, I'd like to just, you know, in the Markets Hunter program, we like to just jump right into it, you know, get down to brass tacks, your general counsel plus your business development officer, the chief business development officer. And there's some some really big news going on today. August 7th, the press release dropped, obviously, with some really great developments from Pet Vivo uh, in what you're doing. And that was the allowance from uh, the United States Patent Office for a uh, key, patent, uh, key patent application. So I'd like to talk a little bit about that uh, from your perspective, not just from the legal aspect, but from also the business development perspective and what that means for the company. Actually, Hunter, it's wonderful for the company. Uh, the company is based on intellectual property. Uh, we're a research and development company that is commercializing some wonderful products right now. So bolstering our patent portfolio is tremendously important to Pet Vivo. Uh, this patent is, is one that we've been looking for for quite some time. Uh, we've gone to the patent office a number of times requesting allowance of the claims. And recently we just received the notice of allowance on claims, which will extend our, our patent protection for a number of years going forward. Well, that's a, that's a shows tremendous growth of the, uh, the company, obviously, but let me just a little bit of research for our audience members. I mean, the fact that this is some major news, um, you know, I'm, I'm reading here, this is, you're growing your, your, total allowed patents to over 20 allowed patents, um, 10 of which are in the United States. Can you talk a little bit to that point? Obviously, this is expanding the patent family, but what this means with 20 allowed patents, 10 of which are in the United States, I'd like both a business development response and then the legal response to that. If you okay. don't mind wearing, since you wear two hats. No, that's, that's perfectly fine. No, the business development side of this happens to come in a number of ways. One, it helps to protect and by excluding others from making, using, or selling our proprietary technology in the market. So we can corner the market with this particular product. And as you know, our, our main product is a product called Spring. It's used for the management of osteoarthritis, where what it is, it's a small sponge-like particulate that will go into the joint really to augment and reinforce the cartilage. And so these patents from a business development standpoint allows us really an exclusive right to be able to make use and sell it in the, in the market. The other thing that it does though, is it allows us to talk to other strategic partners. It bolsters us to be able to do collaborations with entities that are out there that may have similar technologies. And so it's opened the door for us to talk to many companies out there. So uh, John, in, in the move in this market, obviously with everything that's going on and, and we're seeing a lot, obviously, specifically with your company in general, and I've had several conversations with you know uh, various leaders and managers and the CEO John Lai obviously as well. But the move in the market, it's not looking to protect just you know your proprietary technology, but also maximize the value of the overall patent family that you have. Does it, what does this mean for the shareholders' perspective when we look at a three to five year growth for the company and what that potentially means as these patents continue to be issued and 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 secured from your perspective? 
Well, as you, as you know, patents or, and other intellectual property are assets for the company. So what we're doing is we're enhancing the balance sheet by increasing our value in terms of the assets that we have. Now, the beauty behind intellectual property is it's something that does, it explains the rights and gives the rights or gives parties the right to exclude others from making, using or selling the, the products that they have. So it opens the door to partnerships with other parties, which increases the value of the company. It opens the door to licensing opportunities that we can license technology that we may not be using ourselves to commercialize that others might be able to commercialize. So we can talk to everything from small companies to very large companies that might be in our particular market space and gives us the opportunity to be able to generate revenues by working with those large groups that might have larger and very well-developed infrastructure to be able to commercialize products, not only in the United States, but throughout the world. Sure. But when we talk about maximizing the value, does the, the more and more you add patents, and I guess this is probably just a, a hunter question from a market hunter's mm -hmm. perspective, but when we look at the fundamentals of companies and we look at the assets that they have, not only are you, you know, we had done some recent announcements about your company and, and the human uh, trial aspect of this, obviously, you have the equest mm -hmm. design, you have the, uh, the, the, the feline space, you have the small animal space, you've got the dog space. I mean, there, does this prove the fact that there will be longevity of this company in the marketplace? It does. You know, it's one of the things, and you're exactly right. The patents that we end up filing for are usually, usually cover a number of different areas. One, they cover products and Two, they cover the methods of use of those products. And three, they cover the methods of manufacturing. We go after all of those. The nice thing about our patents is that they, they go after the base materials. Many people look at us and they say, oh, you're a one, one product company. That's not true. We're really a biomaterials company. And so what we do is we cover materials themselves that can be used in a number of different applications, not only for small animal and equine, like we're commercializing the spring product right now, but down the line, it opens the door to be able to go into other markets, for example, potentially the human market. And so that increases the value of the company tremendously. Well, and from a shareholder perspective, I mean, in this recent press release that came out today, August 17th, I mean, we're looking at, I mean, you have a, a pipeline of over 17 different products. And the fact that you have, and when we just kind of piece these stories together, 20 plus potential patents, 10 of which are United States, you're having these things issued, 17 products. So it seems to me that this is a, a massive uh, uh, move in the marketplace with this issuance because this is just a potentially a foreshadowing of things to come. Well, and the nice thing about this particular patent is that it focuses on a product that we already have in the market. And so it enhances the value of that particular product in the market by being able to exclude others from being able to make, use, and sell our particular product in that market. And so it will increase our value going forward. And so when you look at the scope of this patent, when it, that's obviously going to trigger some of the larger multinational corporations on a global perspective that will say, oh, we very much like the fact that they've gone down this path. We understand that there's a competitive edge due to the fact that they have not just this pipeline of products, but uh, a pipeline of proven products that are issued into the marketplace. And the fact that they're defended through, you know, these patents, both in the United States and, and abroad, obviously. So can you talk to that point with regards to what that means for working with some of these larger companies? Well, it, it will help in the, in the end. This is a method patent that basically covers the use of these products by injecting them into the synovial space. Okay. And so as, and it could cover a number of different afflictions that way. The nice thing about this is it focuses or it allows us to go after and basically uh, build upon what we're already doing. So we use the spring product, for example, in the management of osteoarthritis and other joint related afflictions. And so the patenting of this particular, uh, this particular patent itself, the claim language that we end up getting helps us to, to exclude others from being able to use a product like ours in those particular applications. 
No, I think that's uh, I think that's an incredible way not just to defend your position in the marketplace, but also, you know, if I was a large company and you've already done it, it just would make sense that I would align forces with you. I mean, that's just mm -hmm. my thought process on the matter. Um, so this is really good. Um, John, I'd like to go through a couple of legal things with you with regards to the company. This is Market Hunter. So we do look at the stock. We do follow along what's going on with the development. You are trading up today, which is great. Um, we're seeing some good volume in the marketplace uh, for our listeners. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe because uh, all, if you look down in the bottom corner and you'll see in our our uh, our, our scroll down in the lower thirds, PETV is their stock symbol. Uh, so make sure you follow along. They're actually trading at $1.96 today. Uh, so that's very good. We're seeing them on the up and up, especially uh, that speaks to what they're doing in the marketplace, given uh, some of the tumultuous times we've seen in the market. Uh, but I want to go back. I see on August 15th, uh, there was an 8K filed. Can you... Uh, Talk a little bit about that. Uh, clear up any confusion that there may have been, because I am seeing some notes that are coming across my desk right now in the chat. Some people are asking the questions. Uh, so if you could just address that matter, I think that would be great. Hunter, no, that's no problem. I can understand the confusion. Uh, this stems from, from a letter sent by NASDAQ to us, I believe it was back in the earlier part of the year where they had indicated that we may not be in compliant with one of the rules regarding the minimum stockholder equity requirement. And so what was done is that we ended up taking that, uh, taking that to task or taking that seriously. And recently what happened is we ended up raising about $2.35 million in capital. What that ended up doing is that met the requirement of 2.5 million of stockholder equity, and which ends up meaning that uh, we will be able to maintain the listing on the NASDAQ capital market. So that's great news. I mean, you're staying on the NASDAQ. Yes. That's great. So, you know, when we look at some of the analyst coverage and we look at some of the uh, the market makers that are, that are in the stock, uh, that's very good. That should give them a lot of uh, uh, confidence in the fact that not only when things are addressed, but you're addressing uh, uh, matters when they come up in a, in a timely manner. So I think that speaks to the uh, the overall fluidity of the management and being able to respond to things as they happen. So that's very, very good, John. I appreciate that. John, we got about 30 more seconds for this segment. Um, I'll, I'll kind of give you the final uh, lay of the land here. Anything you want to add? Any news? Any any foreshadowing you'd like to put out there for our listeners? No. We're, what I'd like to say is that we're incredibly excited about the spring product. As you can probably guess, it has been used in well over probably 3,000 animals right now, and it has seen some tremendous results. And so we're looking forward to continuing to help animals that are in the market that might be suffering from lameness or other joint-related afflictions. And so we have a number of things coming up here in the, in the relatively near future. Uh, we've got clinical data that will be coming in that is showing the beneficial results of spring. Uh, we've got a number of uh, trade shows that are coming up where we're gonna be talking to veterinarians and, and talking to them a little bit about how this product might be able to help them going forward. Well, John, I'm looking forward to it as well. I'm looking forward to reading some of those studies that are coming out because I know they're constantly coming out and uh, we obviously highlight those across all platforms and tweet it out. And so that our listeners and, and various shareholders uh, can stay up to date with what's going on with those reports. So, John, thank you so much for joining me on the program today. John Dolan, uh, General Counsel and Chief Business Development Officer of Pet Vivo. John, thank you so much. Thank you, Hunter. Take care. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on another episode of Markets Hunters. I am your host, Hunter Gaylor, and it's always a pleasure to have uh, you join us here where we bring you the insight. I mean, this is happening in real time. We bring you the information uh, as quick as we can, uh, depending on the the urgency of this. And uh, this is exciting developments that we're seeing from Pet Vivo. If you go back, I encourage you to watch the videos and timeline. You can see the evolution of the company where they're uh, continuing not to just uh, create uh, incredible developments, but as you just heard from uh, their general counsel and chief business development officer, uh, you know, they're, they're continuing to secure their position in the marketplace and they're doing great. I mean, for, for all those pet owners out there, I mean, this is really important. I mean, you know, look at the spring product, talk to your vets about it. You show them these videos. I mean, ha have, have the, their veterinarians listen to some of the, the, the doctors and, and veterinarians we've had on the program talking about the incredible developments of this. So we're going to keep following the program. And as always, you know where to come as 
the uh, go-to source for all of your market news with the companies that we like, that we pick, and we look at the three to five year broadcast and all of these things. So without further ado, this has been another great episode of Market Hunters, and I am your host, Hunter Gaylor, and we hope that you will tune in next time right here on Market Hunters. Coming to you live with the insight you need from the financials and political capitals of the world to the heart of innovation, this is Opportunities to Consider with your host, author, speaker and corporate strategist, Hunter Gaylor.